that too, we can help you out. Yeah, Roxy, help a sister out. There we go. Uh, where we uh, maybe by the microphones? I don't know. I'm just. Filled with the Holy Ghost, Roxy, the way you're stumbling around this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for taking care of me. <laughs> um, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to sing Amazing Grace. Gabby's favorite song, <laughs> but it's by Chris Tomlin. So, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did the grace appear. chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life. chains are gone I've been set free <laughs> and like a flood <laughs> his mercy reigns unending love amazing chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace okay if you get a little emotional thinking about what Jesus has done for you. You know, I don't know where I would be without Jesus. Amen. Amen. A um, couple of announcements. We normally do communion on the first Sunday of the month. We're going to move that to next week because we have a lot of moving pieces going back to two services. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, Isaiah Solomon will be here on Father's Day, Evangelist from Jackson, Ohio. 
um, one service on July 4th for the holiday, and then Jason Razor will be here one service at 2 p.m. Here's the why. We want as many people who need the Holy Ghost to be here. And so if they go, well, I go to my church at 10 o'clock, we're going to go, how convenient, because we're having service at 2 p.m., and the Razor's going to be here, and we're believing that God's going to fill people with the Holy Ghost, amen? And so we're going to have a special service at 2 p.m. on July 11th for the Razor, and God's going to fill people with the Holy Ghost. It's going to be fantastic. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, thank you for your continued giving. I appreciate that. We are able to support our missionaries that we do. We're able to maintain God's house. Amen. We're so glad to have the Nelsons from uh, Brother Bounds Church. Brother Nelson is the promotions director for Ohio North American Missions, and he's here to see how we do things. And Brother Bounds has been my friend up until now, but that may change. You know, he may go back and go, I don't know what those people in Johnstown are doing, man. Um, yeah, we're glad they're here. Amen. Amen. We are going to go to the 18th chapter of John this morning. And verse 37. And uh, goes like this. Pilate therefore said to him, are you... A king then, Jesus answered, uh, you say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause have I come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? What is truth? And I want to talk to you about this this morning. Fake news, what is truth? Amen. In the last five years, we have seen uh, uh, or heard the calls of fake news over and over again. Fake news. Fake. Now, everybody relax. This is not a political message. I don't do those. Everybody take a deep breath. Let the tension go out. Pastor's not being political today. Thank you. All right. So we can't ignore what's going on in our country, though, right? Here, Here is... An interesting story. This was a poll that was put out by Gallup last year. A majority of Amer Americans, 60% of Americans, according to Gallup, either have very little or no trust at all in the news media. This number is up 5% from 2019. And this uh, from, from Gallup shows the breakdown between Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. Right? The blue line is Democrats. The gray line is independents. The red line is Republicans. So Democrats have far more trust in the news than Republicans do or independents do. Now, here's, here's a, a word I'm going to throw at you. It's called confirmation bias. And that says that I agree with and trust people who think like me. Right? Because if they think like me, they can't be wrong because I'm not wrong. Right? Getting a real low smattering of amens here. That's kind of hurtful. I'll be honest with you. Um, confirmation bias. So if, if you wonder which way the news media in the United States tends to go, it's confirmation bias right there. But it says we surround ourselves with yes men who will, instead of having hard conversations about where we are and what we believe, will pat us on the back and tell us how groovy we are. That's right, Kathy, use the word groovy. For news, it leaves you uninformed. Spiritually, it's deadly. When people can't tell you and have card conversations, I have three men in my life who can at any time say, Donnie, you've got a problem and I have to receive it. Because if, if I expect you to listen to me as your pastor and I don't have anybody in my life who can tell me no, I am a hypocrite. Right? I have to have people in my life who can say no. Right? Brother Kramer, Brother Wilson, Brother Bounds can all say no. And, and I have to give them that right to say, look, you got a problem here, you need to correct it. 
If I expect you to listen to me as your pastor, I'm going to have somebody who's watching out for my soul. Because guess what? I don't get everything right. I know you're all shocked. <laughs> Amazed. You're kidding. That's a revelation. No. Fact checkers on social news sites. <laughs> or you love fact checkers. So they are all over social media. An investigation into these fact checkers show that they are one-sided organizations that don't so much check facts, but argue a point of view. In the good old days, we would call fact checkers propagandists. In the last two weeks, uh, Facebook has decided to unblock uh, news stories that suggested that the uh, last 16 months of fun we've had came from a lab leak in, the, in uh, the Wuhan province of China. Only in the last two weeks, for the last 16 months, you haven't been able to post that. I promise you I'm not being political. Just reporting the news, folks. Credible news stories that are damaging to one political party are blocked or hidden, while more dubious stories about another political party are given free reign. And so the news stops being news. It's more commentary based on a point of view. Now, I'm not saying that for either political party. Wherever your political uh, sensibilities lie, you can find somebody to agree with you. Right? Right? I can guarantee you I can find people who will tell me just what I want to hear. Amen. You got to love me to go to heaven. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Here we go. Next. 25.3 million people cut the cord in 2020. There are al almost as many households in America without pay television as with pay television. A drastic shift in the last 30 years. I'm one of those people. I have a problem supporting organizations that bring objectionable content into my home and have an agenda and a value system that are contrary to my own. And people are going, I don't need this. I am paying money to have people promote things that I don't agree with. Right? Hypothetically. Please, only hypothetically. If I were to come into your home in front of your children and start swearing a lot, right? Some of you might go, well, I knew he had it in him. No. Um, <laughs> they might go, dude, my kids are right here, right? Why are you swearing in front? Of, why do you keep using that language in front of my kids? Now put that same thing on a box comes in your home, swears in front of your kids, and lo and behold, we, when Charity and I, when our kids were little, we would watch things, and then our kids would pick up things, and we would go, where did you hear that? Thank God they never launched that at church. Right? If I came into your house and I did that, you'd go nuts. And what if I did that, and I said, now you owe me $150 for, for swearing in front of your children. You would go, you are loony. But we do that with the stuff that we let into our houses. See, now it's going to get better. All right? But that's why people go, I am not going to pay for this. In this world, we need truth. There's a lot of opinions, but not a lot of truth. There's a lot of noise, but there's not a lot of signal. We need truth. So, what is truth? So, our text was, uh, that we read was in the time immediately before Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus was arrested in the garden, and he's undergone this mock trial at the home of the high priest. Now, you have to understand at the time, for areas under Roman occupation, the Roman state retained the sole right to execute someone. And for this reason, they have to take Jesus to Pilate, who is the Roman governor, to have Jesus put to death. So, here's where the story picks up in John chapter 18. They led Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium, and it was early morning, and they themselves did not go into the praetorium, lest they should become defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not an evildoer, we wouldn't have delivered him to you. They go over to Pilate. And they don't go into the praetorium or Pilate's house or the judgment seat because they don't want to defile themselves. Here's the interesting thing. 
if you know Mosaic law, they are more than happy to steamroll every provision that talks about witnesses and trials and the tearing of the high priest's robe and all of these things that you're not supposed to do. But they don't want to defile themselves for the Passover. They're not seeking truth. They're seeking an outcome. In the process, they are willing to bend or break the law to get their desired outcome. One of the greatest dangers in the church today is bending scriptures to adapt to your political views. I see this all the time. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I see this all the time, especially on social media, where people who used to believe truth but have had changes politically will go, well, the Scripture actually, or the Scripture's not valid now because it doesn't agree with what I believe. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. If, the, if your views don't align with Scripture, your views need to change, right. not the Scripture. Amen. Jesus says in uh, Matthew chapter 24, and verse 35, he says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Jesus said everything all around us at some point is going to pass away. But if you will build your life on the word of God and say, This is what we stand on, not our views, not politics. We build our life on the word. We need to be grounded in truth so that when the world gets crazy... Who knows that the world's crazy right now, right? Uh, I, my, my mom uh, passed away 20 years ago, and, and part of me goes, I'm glad she didn't have to see this craziness, right? This is nuts. Now, here's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. He said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat the house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Jesus said, if you hear my words and you do them, James chapter 1 and verse 22 says, don't be a hearer only, but be a doer of the word. Right? If you're a doer of the world, you're like a wise man who built your house on a rock. But it doesn't say build a, build a house on a rock, does it? It says build a house on what? The rock. The connotates one rock. Right? One of the most repugnant phrases of the common age. Ready? You're like, boy, he is on fire today. Give me a week off and I'm all wound up. I hate it. Here's the phrase I hate. Your truth. Speak your truth. We need to hear your truth. You need to live your truth. Gag a maggot. Right? That's right, I said it. Gag a maggot. There is no your truth. There is the truth, and the truth may not agree with your truth, and that's kind of the point. And in case you're in doubt, Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. There is no your truth. There is the truth, and unless your truth agrees with the truth, then you're wrong. What? You are not sensitive. It's all right. We'll all get through this together. I promise. I am, Jesus said, the way, the truth, and the life. That's pretty definitive, isn't it? Right? There's no wiggle room in the way, the truth, and the life. And by the way, nobody comes to the Father except through me. All paths do not lead to God. Sorry, Oprah. The way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. I am. Right? Words mean things. I am. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me. And they say to me, What's his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus shall you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moses, 
wanted to know who he should say had sent him. What's the name of the person who was coming? And he said, you tell them that I'm coming in the name of the I am. I am that I am has sent you. Not uh, in 2021, the I am that I am is sending you into the world. He's sending you out to proclaim his truth, not your truth, his truth, the truth. Amen? Amen. Aren't you thankful for the I am this morning? Amen. Back to John chapter 18, Pilate said to them, you take him and you judge him according to your law. Then the Jews said to him, it's not law for us, for us to put anyone to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke signifying by what de death he should die. The Jews hate Jesus so much that they are willing to break their own laws. And they're also willing to conspire with their oppressors to get the job done. Right? In numerous times in Scripture, Jesus said, "And I, and I, unless I am lifted up, I will, when, I, when I am lifted up, I'll draw all men into me." This said, He's signifying the way He would die, right? Jesus has said it before, over and over in Scripture. I'm going to be crucified, right? Well, only one group does that. That's the Romans, and we find the Jews conspiring with the Romans, who are their oppressors. And they conspire with their oppressors to get the job done. Now, this is the danger of self-rationalization. You know that you can talk yourself into anything and convince yourself that the end justifies the means. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Charity go, who are you arguing with in there? Me, and I'm winning. Who are you arguing with? Me, and I'm winning. Jesus has mentioned at least twice in his ministry that he'd be lifted up from the earth, which signifies crucifixion. And the only way who, that's going to happen is if the Romans do it. And the Jews are more than happy to conspire to make this happen. They have rationalized, well, if we just conspire with the Romans this once. Do you know how dangerous that thinking is? This isn't going to be a pattern. It's just going to be this one time. And we convince ourselves that it's a... It's an isolated event. It's not something we're going to do on the brag, right? And we convince ourselves. And then we convince ourselves again. And lo and behold, that one didn't hurt so much. And we convince ourselves again. And not before long, it doesn't take any convincing. We just do it because it becomes behavior. We need to be very careful of what we are self-rationalizing and self-justifying that it, that it falls in line with this book. Amen? Amen? Verse 33, Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you a king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and, your, and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Pilate's ignorant of the situation. And in fact, he doesn't want anything to do with it. But here's the cold fact. You can't ignore Jesus. When you're confronted with Jesus, you have to make a choice. And by not making a choice, you're still making a choice. Jesus said, did other people tell you about this? Or are you asking for yourself? Every interaction with Jesus requires a response. That's why we come to church. That's why when Marilyn sings the songs about my chains are gone. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, when I, my chains are gone. I used to live in a way that wasn't pleasing to God and that oppressed me and brought me down. But I came in and I lifted my hands and the chains came off. And I could feel the power, hallelujah, of God in me. My chains are gone. And we get a little choked up when we sing about that. When we sing about I'll fly away in a few days, uh, just a few more weary days of going through this world. This world is not my home. Right. I'm just passing through. Right. We come to church and God requires a response. That's why we share our testimonies. I was talking to Sister Monk Thursday night and she said, tell Kathy I need that faith. She said, I need that healing faith. Went, okay, I'll, we'll get you after church. <laughs> she's right there in the camera um, once you encounter Jesus you are changed you have no choice but to be changed right 
You ever come in here? We talked about this. We've been real honest about it. You come in on Sunday morning, and you think, my God, why did I wake up for this? And then you begin to sing. You know, right? And you stretch out and all that, and you begin to feel the Holy Ghost. You go, oh, that's why I came here for this. Why? Because we begin to communicate and, 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 and talk to God and begin to feel God talk to us. And we begin to feel the Spirit, and we corporately begin to worship, and the Holy Ghost moves. And we went, ah, that's why I do this. Because you are changed when you interact with Jesus. First Peter Chapter 2 and verse 9 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You were in darkness, and he has called you and me into his marvelous light. Always remember, Jesus did not come and die on the cross to make bad people good. He came to bring dead people back to life. He did not come here so that you could live a better life. He came so you could live an eternal life. Jesus came and came, and he, the Bible says, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. I believe that. We're not of this world. And Jesus told Pilate that. Verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Jesus says, My kingdom's not of the world. If Jesus' kingdom isn't of the world and we are followers of Jesus, why are we so concerned about worldly things? This world is not my home i'm just passing through here's what jesus said in matthew chapter 6 don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust uh destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also now when i read this word people go oh he's preaching about money again money 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 nope well, maybe a little, but mostly no. <laughs> if you're all feeling convicted about money, go with it. But that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a mindset that says, my heart, my body may be on earth, but my heart knows I've got a better home just beyond this land. I am not focused on this world. I am focused on the world to come because I believe in the kingdom of God. I am a servant of the kingdom of God. And so while I am in this world, I am not of this world. And so I'm laying up treasures there. I'm not going, how can I get ahead? More Can I get more ahead here on earth? But I'm going, how many people can I take to heaven with me? And that's why we move service to 2 o'clock and we have an evangelist come in. Why? So people can receive the Holy Ghost. So we can baptize people in Jesus' name. So we can see people go to heaven. You know what? When you die one second into eternity, you won't care how big your bank account is. But when you get to heaven, you go, well, the Holy Ghost. I prayed for that one. I prayed for that one. I invited that one to church. I was there when that one was baptized. I prayed for that one when they received the Holy Ghost. Those are treasures in heaven that we need to lay up and say, God, that's the stuff I care about. Paul writes to the Romans in, in chapter 14 and verse 17. He said, the kingdom of heaven is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So brother man, I was talking about with brother man's lesson day. The kingdom of heaven isn't stuff. All right? Paul tells the Romans, the kingdom of heaven isn't eating and drinking. Right? Food and drinking. And that's why Jesus tells Peter, he goes, do you love me more than miracles? Right? Miracles are great, but that's the blessing of God. That's not the kingdom of God. And so we, we confuse the stuff with, oh, this is what God's about. Oh, no, he's not. God will bless us, but the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And if we are living in the Holy Ghost, and if we are living for the world to come, then we appreciate the stuff, and we thank God for the stuff, but we know the stuff isn't the kingdom. And the kingdom is, this one's going to heaven with me. This one's going to heaven. This one's going to heaven with me. And we pray, and we invite them to church, and God fill them with the Holy Ghost, and we baptize them with Jesus' name. And they lived a transformed life through the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's the kingdom of God. Amen. And if we know truth, we will be spirit-led, 
and spirit-filled. Amen? Amen. Now I'm ready to get to my text, which means I'm almost done. Pilate said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you rightly said I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? Jesus said, everyone who is of the truth hears his voice. And so that's the question that sits before us this morning. Are we hearing the voice of God? Are we just hearers of the word or are we doers of the word? Because it's not enough to hear the voice of God. I mean, it's great to hear the voice of God. You should be hearing the voice of God, right? Prayer shouldn't be a one-way conversation. Prayer is not a lecture. God, have a nice comfy seat while I tell you everything, what your marching orders are for the day. Right? But I pray, you know, prayer 101. If you're not hearing back, (laughs) you're probably not doing it right. When I, (laughs) and there's a way to do that. Are you ready? It's going to blow your mind, this deep theological exegesis. When you're praying, set aside time in your prayers to shut up. Be quiet and listen to what the Holy Spirit would say to your spirit. Right? If I'm talking, and and those of us who've been in church forever, right, we can talk about nothing and not think about it. Oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, Jesus. And then if we go, like, into Hillsong, we'll go, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God. Right? We just talk. And my brain is a million miles away, despite what my mouth is saying. And God is going, uh, uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I talk? Can I, uh, uh. Um, excuse me, I'm doing something here. Stop talking and listen to what the Spirit would say to you. If you would stop. I know this sounds stupid, but just go with me, right? If you would stop talking, (laughs) some of the husbands are looking at the wives, and wives are looking at the husband and going, please. (laughs) If you would stop talking and doing what the Bible calls vain repetitions and listen to God, do you know that Jesus wants nothing more than to talk back to you? He wants nothing more than to go. We've talked about this before. Jesus loves you so much that he will talk to you about stuff that only pertains to you. Can you imagine? Pilate said, what is truth? And that's the question that's before us today. The truth is the I am. And we are called to not share our truth, but to share the truth. Here's what Paul writes to the Ephesians. He said that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth, how? In love. Do not beat people with the scripture. You can be right and wrong all at the same time. Brother Man has talked about this in Sunday school over and over and over again. He said, I was right. I knew I was right. And he said, if I had to kill him, I was going to convince him I was right. Well, I kept thinking, was that's a bold strategy. Let's see how that plays out. Right? We are not here to take anything away from your relationship with God. But maybe we can add to it. Right? We can add to what you know. That, and so I'll use Kathy. Kathy, I love Kathy so much. She goes, you have never said anything bad about my entire upbringing. I said, why would I? But maybe I can add something to it. Right? We are here to speak the truth. And if we're not speaking the truth in love, we're not doing what the book says. You need to love. Oh, why not? Stop worrying about being right and just start loving people. If you love people, you'll go, let me, let me share something with you that helped me. Maybe it'll help you. Right? 
That's not going, bless God, I'm going to blow your theology out of the water. (laughs) And you may be right, and you may lose anyways. But if you love somebody, you'll go, let me share with you. All right, we talked about this verse. Brother May and I talked about this. The Bible says, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the what? The word of their testimony. Nothing more powerful than going, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you. Because it's first person. It's that, it's that direct test. You know, here's what Jesus did for I, I, I don't, can't talk to about anybody else. But let me tell you what Jesus did for me. And so when Marilyn's up here and she starts crying and saying, my chains are gone, I've been set free. Why? Because she knows what Jesus has done for her. Amen. And when I get up here and I get excited because I'm telling you what Jesus did for me. Right. Right? I was lost. I grew up in a church pew and was lost as can be. You know you can do that? You've got to have your own. My mom and dad relationship with Jesus would not get me one inch off the ground when the rapture happens. I have to have my relationship with Jesus Christ. Speak the truth in love. Amen. Paul said we're not tossed to and fro, but we're built on the rock, the truth. Amen. Let's stand this morning. What is truth? Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. Amen. I believe that if we will speak the truth and share Jesus Christ in our community, that God will do a great work. Do you believe that? I believe it in Jesus. I believe in this world. Paul said we're not tossed to to and fro by every wind and wave of doctrine, but we are built on the rock. We're built on the truth. Stay in the book. Believe it. Share truth and love God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. God, I thank you for the truth. I thank you for the word of God that we've built our lives on. We've built, Lord, everything in our hearts on. We, we are not of this world. We're in it, but our hearts are set to a world beyond this world. God, I t- trust right now that you will empower this church to be witnesses, Lord, to every person that comes in their way. Lord, let them share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that souls can be saved and brought to you and be in relationship with you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I love every one of you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll see you next week. God bless you.